it's going to be fine. Uh, you have no idea what we're talking no. about. It's going to be a short Q&A uh, of many things. You're going to read and you might answer a few ones, but I have a good idea of uh, some others. Okay. So, there so we one of us know where we're going. Kind of. <laughs> okay, so from John. Love your work. My biggest question is, do you coordinate the total movement with the shutter? In other words, do you use a timed shutter release or a remote trigger release? And does the shutter and the movement end at the same moment? Okay, so the answer is yes, no, no and yes, it depends. Okay, and at the blue hour, I'm always on bold mode. So I have this remote in my left hand and the light is always on. Okay, so I'm going to do the movement and and while I'm on both, so I, I trigger, I do the movement and I release, but the light stays on. So it's going to be probably uh, one, two, three seconds, super quick exposure, but the light stays on. So that's the first part of the night. But then when it comes darker, I switch things. I go on manual mode on the camera, so I don't have to hold this I don't have to hold the buttons, I'm clicking only once, but then the light is off. So when I <laughs> when I turn when I turn on when I when I trigger the camera, then I can turn on the light and turn it off and then I keep the shutter open just to get more light for the Milky Way or, or the stars. So that's gonna be uh, manual exposure, probably eight seconds most of the time. And so the light is manually triggered at that time as opposed to the camera that is manually triggered uh, in bulb at the beginning of the night. From Sean, is there a limit to how much you can learn in photography and light painting? Once you've been doing it a few years, have you found that you're still learning significant things or do better? My first two years were was only about doing a studio photography. I was using super small tubes, acrylic blades, uh, papers, and, and no, no big tubes. The, the tubes that I'm using these days, uh, I didn't know about that. Uh, so short answer is there's no limit for, for me. And I, I think we, we saw at the beginning, uh, this whole movement with the tubes, is it's getting big but it's very small compared to what it's going to be in a few years and there's going to be other things uh, gravitating about around this so i think that it was just like in a small tiny fraction of what it's going to be in a few years we're going to learn so much about techniques the way we work now what i just explained about this this shutter i was not doing that uh, a year ago. This is still new for me, so yes, I'm uh, still evolving. And uh, there's a lot of uh, addict addiction and dedication to this technique. We keep trying to learn more, get better, explain in a better way what, what we found. We keep learning, but I feel like it's more uh, maybe subtle. Mm -hmm. It's all like subtleties that make uh, this practice and art like easier and more uh, sophisticated, but it's, so it might not seem as, a, as big of a new thing that we learn, but it's still new. And, and yeah, like each time now, at the beginning we were not doing astrophotography with light painting and now mm. we are. And just that opens like a whole new door of possibility to learn about a, a new field of photography. Yeah. So, so we can combine it. Yeah, um, and we can do much more in, a, in the same night because we used to work only at the blue hour, so we had 15 minutes and that was it. And after the blue hour, we were in pitch black and like we're not doing good things except yeah. maybe in cities, but outdoors it, it was over. We were not able to, to shoot with the stars of the Milky Way. And these are tricks that we found over time and it's really part of our process now and we sometimes we aim to go to a location for the stars and so we check everything with photo pills to know exactly at what time we should go to a specific location so yeah um yeah okay. keep learning from hannah over a year ago i had an accident at work which caused the spinal injury following the accident i went from being a strong independent woman 
who was working within clinical trials for cancer patients to barely being able to get out of bed. It wasn't just my body that got hurt, but my mind. I suffered with depression and anxiety and didn't want to do anything. I lost who I was. Before my accident, I had always had an interest in photography, but I was brand new and clueless. Having to spend so much time in bed recovering meant I spent a lot of time on my phone looking stuff up to pass the time. This is where I discovered you and Kim. I loved your work and your photos really inspired me. So as soon as I was given the all clear to walk again, this is what I wanted to do. For the first time in a long time, I felt excited. I was interested in something and my depression was put aside. My amazing partner made me a tube, bought me a cheap torch and carried all I needed. He froze as I happily sat there with my remote and took many, many pictures. I am now... <laughs> I'm now well, truly on the road of recovery. And although I do still struggle some days... <laughs> Peux-tu le lire? <rire> ok, c'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon. My amazing partner made me a tube, bought me a cheap torch and carried all I needed. He froze as I happily sat there with my remote and took many, many pictures. I am now well and truly on the road to recovery. And although I do still struggle some days, my favorite days are those I spend with my handmade tube and my family. At a time when I was needed something to bring me out of the fog I was living in, I found you and Kim, so thank you. For the beauty you bring, the inspiration, the videos that make me feel like you're a pal, and for sparkling inspiration in me and so many others. I'm a big fan and very grateful. Thank you. Okay, so I read that the first time and it made me cry. <laughs> and I didn't know I was about to read that. And it, make me, it makes me cry again. <laughs> I think I'm just, I feel touched. And I want to say thank you. Like, um, I don't know. For me, it's, it's meaningful to be able to, to know that what we naively do and do with you know, just joy and and we hope to bring something positive in people's in people's uh, lives, not lives, but in people's um, daily life. And so, to me, that means a lot. I have that first picture she did, uh, so I'm going to put it right there. I'll show nice. you, show it to you <laughs> after. So. And uh, Anna, we're going to send you uh, the nine tubes that we have, uh, a few flashlights, um, a couple of things. So uh, I'm gonna send you a message to just get your, your address. Yeah, so thank you for reaching out and letting, letting us know. Now I'm gonna take a minute. <laughs> <laughs> From Josh, Eric, thank you so much for everything you have done. You are really inspiring me on a different level with my photography and the fact that you are so generous in sharing with us your secret is absolutely amazing. I was wondering though, maybe for one of your next two video, you could tell us a little bit about your story, how you got into light painting and how you advanced to working with Kim and how you become so successful in your work. Am I successful? I don't know, <laughs> but... Um, and th this cat is older than this whole light painting thing for me. She's going to turn 10 years old in 10 days. She Happy was born on, on spring day. Mm, yes. <laughs> okay, um, so how did it start? How to make it... Uh, simple but yet complete so basically eric was working with a multi-camera setup uh, on different events and, and he wanted to do a personal project something that would be more artistic so he was looking for a way to like have a really studio quality pictures 
So basically, it was a much smaller rig than we we are working working with now. Um, so if if he was using like strobes or any uh, ambient light, like he would you would see all the cameras, and he didn't want that. So at some point, he realized that light painting was the answer because he could like control. Uh, the light and have a really concentrate light around the subject. So yeah, my first happened. my first light painting pictures were bad, obviously. Uh, I have no idea, and I had bicycle lamps that I was holding in my hand. It was a total mess, uh, over a minute exposure, and wasn't good at all. But I kind of knew where I wanted to go, um, so I kept practicing every day. I was seeing someone. I worked for a few months, I saw over 100 people, uh, repeated uh, every day. And the more I advanced, and the, the shorter my exposure time was, and the brighter, brighter my uh, flashlight was. So I came to that point where I was at one second, and I, I, I knew it. It was, it was the answer. One second, light painting. So I got everything I wanted. The cameras were not visible, my subject were, was properly lit and crisp because that's a hard thing in light painting. Most of the, the light painting I used to see back then was either like a, a one minute light painting, super nice stuff, but not what I wanted to do because if you do light painting on, on a human for one minute, it's going to be blurry, which can be good, but it's, just, it's not what I wanted. Or the other solution is to flash your subject but I, I didn't want to go there and I still don't want to do it. Um, so that, that kind of worked for me just to, to work hard every day to, to reach that point. And that was just the, the beginning because I, I wanted to, to do stop motion on top of all of that. And that was tricky and it took, took me a while to, to go there, but this is how uh, I came to, to Lightspin and I, I met Kim during that project, uh, Lightspin. And and we just continue working together since, yeah. since that day. So many, like, if you know Eric for not a long time, maybe you don't know that actually he started in studio, like, with light painting. Mm. And before the whole tube, uh, tube story thing, and like before we brought the tubes, um, I don't know, into, <laughs> into our lives, uh, it was all about one second light painting and that that's also like all this practice all this knowledge that he, he gained through like those early years of studio light painting then a lot of them we could apply once we discovered the tube and we were playing outside even if it, it was like a really different setup mm -hmm. a whole different set of rules <laughs> for, mm -hmm. per se yeah so the the tubes as we know them four feet long is still quite new. It's been three years and a half now. But before that, I was rolling my own tubes and they were one foot long, except a few ones that were a bit longer, about that size. That's two feet. And this, this is one of my actual tubes that is uh, cut in two. But I was rolling my tubes back then. And I have a few pictures made in studio that dates from way before our Tube Stories adventure. So here's one with three different layers of uh, gels, uh, Rosco gels, a sheet of Rosco gels that I just rolled using the flower. So that, that flower came from way before. And we did one also uh, rooftoping uh, in New York using a similar one. And before that, I was also using it in 360. So this one here uh, with Jenny and this same tube that I rolled, I put a small yellow one on top of it and I moved the thing around her and that, that worked great too. So the tubes that we found in San Francisco were really helpful because they were more solid and just opening a lot of doors much, much longer also. So that was the, the, the solution. And um, so that's, this is what we use outdoors most of the time, but we keep experimenting with smaller ones, especially in the studio. Now, my, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm going to say, Maev. <laughs> so, great video. 
Secretly glad to see your struggle with the wind and falling over since I've been laughed at when that happened to me. It's difficult to stand still. Makes me wonder if you also sometimes accidentally hit the other with the tube or is that still a beginner's mistake or only something that happened to me? Christian. I just recently came across your Instagram, which I think is fantastic. I'm curious, what is, the, what is your process for choosing locations to shoot? Um, so we have places where we know we want to go. I have a list of places I want to visit. Um, and sometimes we're just lucky we are invited to, to places like uh, when we went to, to Bali or uh, in China, we were invited there. So we, when, once we're there, obviously we, we do our things, but sometimes we just want to go at some places. This is what happened uh, when we went to Morocco twice because we wanted to go there. Uh, we went three times to Uyuni because that's the best place on earth for what we do. Uh, Atacama was a place we already had on top of our list, but lucky us, we've been invited to go there just for one night, but we stayed a uh, full week for just to continue to do our stuff. So the, at the beginning, what we were looking for uh, was empty places because it was making sense with our style, I think, and um, so it was deserts, uh, beaches, rocks, fields. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's been common uh, kind of place we've been looking for, for for years. And there are so many others that we want to visit, uh, like the moon. Um, Antarctica. No, it's long enough. That's a lot of details. That's going to be it for today. Thanks, everyone. Send us more questions. <laughs>